opportunity we have for salvation. Father, there's just so much involved in the birth of the woman being pregnant, how that happened, why that had to happen that way. We just grace you. Thank you so much for all you've done. Pray now this morning that we have a wonderful time together to study the word of God and worship together. Father, we pray these things in Christ's name for his sake. Amen. Good, good morning. A reading from the word of Matthew chapter 2, starting at verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and she shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And Joseph awoke from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took Mary his wife, but kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son and called his name Jesus. All right, we'll continue this morning uh, with some announcements and uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, prayer requests. We'll have our offertory and uh, presentation of our Christmas program. Okay, first of all, the schedule. Uh, tonight, today is, of course, now next Sunday, the 26th, we will not have a uh, 9.30 class. We will have class next Sunday at the 10, 1030, uh, 1045, but not in the morning. Then, continuing that week, we have Friday. Friday night at 7 o'clock, Christmas, uh, New Year's Eve, 7 o'clock to 9. We'll come and study the Word of God, worship together. Uh, Friday night at uh, the night. And then the 2nd of, uh, of uh, January, we'll go back a normal schedule, except uh, we will have two of the early Sunday mornings. I'll be doing both of them, taking care of what we did started this morning. We want to finish it next Sunday. So that Sunday, the 2nd, will be another study in that area. And then we will continue in verse 2 in second class the whole week. Okay, now... Prayer. Phil has uh, medical problems, so let's be in prayer for Phil. I don't know how long he's going to have to be 
out, but let's be in prayer for Phil at this time and let's see what uh, what he'll be doing. Now, let's talk about prayer. First of all, did we have the meeting yesterday? We did. We went to Princeton and it was phenomenal. It, we probably had 25 kids show up. Ooh. It was windy. It had been raining. The temperature dropped. Like, what's going to happen? And kids just started coming in and parents came to and the manager at that property, the other manager from South Fork came out to join us. And also the maintenance man, Franco, they just have a heart for these people and they're believers. And so it was really just beautiful watching that and just seeing how they're encouraging these kids and want something for these families of the Lord and the word of God. So we definitely were partnering with them coming in and doing that. And it was just, they, the kids stayed. We had jingle bell toss. We had crafts about God and the birth of Christ. We had, and they just, a couple of them left and then they came back with their mom, talked their mom into coming back. They just wanted to stay. There were several of them that were very hungry. You know, there were some of them that just looked very rough. You just wonder what kind of life, but I, there was just so much joy there. And that was the Lord being there. So we're going to take some Spanish Bibles this week. A lot of Spanish speaking yeah. parents um, requesting Spanish Bibles. Yeah. And talked about camp, and even the manager asked about our high school retreat slam camp. She has two teenage children that she would like to come. So we know it's the beginning of a relationship that God is right in the middle of. So we're Beautiful. Really thankful for your prayers. All right. Let's camp. continue being in prayer. Um, outside of Phil, do we have any other requests for prayer? Yes. <clears throat> My neighbor, Phil, he's been in the hospital with COVID. Of COVID pneumonia, they've had to take him in and out of consciousness. Um, it started before Thanksgiving, so it is pretty serious. Um, we'll be in prayer. What's your first name? Phil. Phil. <laughs> Phil. All right, we'll be in, be in prayer for Phil. All right, any other prayer requests? Yes. Uh, my friend uh, Christy uh, is in stage three breast cancer. Uh, just. I think we've already, I've already mentioned this, but she's going through chemo treatment right now. She had to cut all her hair off the other day because it was just falling out. Um, and just, she's got a young family. So if you just be in prayer, especially through the Christmas season here, um, that uh, they can, their, their young family can understand that God has a plan through all of this. Okay. And, so, uh, and for her, obviously for her health. Definitely so. be in prayer. Anything, anything we can do? Um, they are taking, uh, donations for, uh, covering some medical bills and, and okay. things like that. Cause I, I mean, I know she works with me at Capital One, but I, I know that there's still a significant amount of, of, uh, out of pocket, you know, okay. expenses. Uh, I can get more information on that if anybody's interested in, in, uh, in doing that, but I'll have to get the online okay. donation capability for y'all okay. for that. And anything else we might can do? Okay, I'll let you know. I'll ask. I'll let you know. But uh, let me tell you, we got a. I was uh, alarmed this week. Oh, uh, maybe like Wednesday. People next door to our house, and all of a sudden there's about uh, four men, and they're out there putting up the Christmas uh, lights, and went in and talked to them. And people, they are Mormons. And yet, they came together to help. The woman, uh, her husband, uh, was he 90, was he 100? No, but he was close to it. Yeah, he was 99, something like that. And he died this uh, year. And so she's very old, but they were there. But they, they came in and uh, put together their, uh, the lights for them and all. And I was just really impressed. And anything in this church, somebody needs it, we need to... Uh, step up and get to the front and help people and these these kinds of things. So we need to do that. Okay, anything else? Yes. Well, uh, breakthrough, our college retreat is January 6th, 7th, and 8th. 6th, 7th, and 8th. And so it's coming very fast. Yeah. In fact, amazingly it fast. <laughs> it's going to be up at Texoma Youth Camp. Okay. We've got yeah, the old camp we used to go to. Um, we've got 20-ish signed up right now. We think we're probably going to be 25-plus. Uh, college kids for that weekend. Uh, the theme is follow me. We'll be talking about um, um, salvation and then what's your life look like after you're saved. 
And so uh, please be in prayer for all of all of the preparation, the teaching, the a lot of work going on to prepare the teaching. And now, the if something on. happens to Phil, are you going to fill in? Or? Phil, I am. We are doing the teaching. So, okay. yeah, we've got it covered. Good. Phil wasn't going to be in that one. He's going to do the okay. high school version. Very good. So you got that one covered. Yeah. So we'll be in prayer. Yep. Okay. Anything else? All right, people, it's our pleasure to be a part of what God is doing. <clears throat> the church, they're actually believers from the very beginning have been able uh, to come together financially and support the teaching of God Lord in the Ace of Israel last uh, dispensation, church during this dispensation. It's our opportunity to give some money, support the teaching of the word of God, spreading of the gospel, the use of our and uh, uh, outreach. There's so many different things that we need to keep doing as far as some has occurred, occurred. So let's start with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, it is a joy at Christmas as any other time at Christmas to tell others of Jesus Christ what he has done. Father, we pray that you now receive the offerings we're about to give, that you will continue using this assembly, the spreading of the gospel, spreading of the word of God, Bible doctrine, teaching of the word of God, spreading of the gospel, all the wonderful joys and pleasures we have. So Father, we pray you receive the money for these things. In Christ's name, amen. assemble our uh, praise team to begin singing up front in just a minute. If you happen to have a copy of the, if you see a copy on the paper of the first song we're going to do this morning, would you stand and join us please with, Do You Hear What I Hear? It should be somewhere around you. If somebody needs an extra one, I think there's a few behind Julie on the copy machine there. Yeah, if I could have the uh, praise team come up here and where uh, the film can capture you. Yes, I do. Yes, we do. Let us bring him 
Christmas carols uh, you can refer to on pages 30, excuse me, 98 and 99 of our regular hymn book. I don't recall ever seeing these before, but they are classics, and uh, we uh, decided that we should share them with you this morning. We would see Jesus, lo his star, followed by, O oh, sing a song of Bethlehem. Yeah. 
is born. So let's begin with the word of prayer and then we will begin in verse 8 in our study. Let us pray. We 
We thank you so much that Jesus Christ was born. We thank you so much, Heavenly Father, that he chose to be sinless and then to bear the sins of the world. Father, we just consider you so rich and so wonderful to provide all these things for us. Pray now your spirit will teach us your word. These things, Father, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Um, <clears throat> next, uh, well, not next Sunday, but then the following Sunday we do, we'll do another study from the uh, early, early morning Sunday. <clears throat> I strongly recommend you, you try to listen to it between then and then be there for that of uh, why the virgin birth preg virgin pregnancy and um, why so so many things that are happened that happened this that morning and uh, what where man is not involved in all of this and uh, We'll try to go through a whole number of issues and quotes at that time. Okay, let's continue now. Jesus Christ is born. We're in Luke, is, uh, Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. We have introduces here another aspect of the world that dims as foolish and more on the Christmas story. The theme of Christmas is a good news. We just saw in this study the issue in dealing with his death. Now we get to the good news of Christmas. Verse 8. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out, staying out in the fields and keeping watch of their flock at night. Now people, everything in here is so important. In the same region that's around Bethlehem. That's the same country where David was a shepherd and uh, where he learned obedience and faithfulness and was called by God to serve him. Now it says there were shepherds. Think about this. The first people to hear the Christmas Christmas story, not G uh, kings, not priests, not prophets, not preachers, <clears throat> shepherds. The first people to hear it were shepherds. The first people to see the resurrection story, the Savior, was also not from some great person, but a woman who believed in Jesus Christ. Now, the Greek word, we're going to deal with two different Greek words. The first Greek word, Romeo, P-O-I-M-E-N, that means shepherd, herd, herdsman. But there's another word that's important, women, P-O-I-M-A-I-N-O. Now that means to herd, to sheep. It also means to rule, to govern. Under the ideal of a sheep who is above uh, the uh, flock, but also people. This is taken, if you want to, look at John chapter 21. John chapter 21 Well, we have the same word there, and now we have one of the reasons why it's here. John, John 21, verse 15. Now, when they had finished breakfast, this is Jesus Christ and the disciples at the end of time, of, their, of Christ's time, they had finished breakfast, which, by the way, is important. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, Son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. 
And then Jesus said, he said to him, tend my lambs. Then verse 16, he said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, shepherd my sheep. That's our word. The use of this uh, word, translate shepherd, means to shepherd the church. Look at Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Verse 28. This refers to the shepherd of the church. Verse 28 of Acts 20. Be on guard for yourselves, be on guard for yourselves, and for all the flock, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseer to shepherd the church, which he purchased with his own blood. Now, let's take some characteristics of a shepherd. So I'm just going to go over some characteristics of a shepherd. One, <clears throat> they had to be watchful and alert, conscious of everything around them to learn, uh, they, to lead them to pastures and to water. So that's what their name, their work all the time. Two, they had to know their flock. They had to know the flock. When I was in the military, I had to go on a general, I take an officer uh, to a uh, meeting and had the whole day by myself. And I was riding, driving through part of the area there of Germany and was on a, the hill, a mountain, looking down in the valley. And there was a shepherd taking his flock, going across the field in the uh, in the field where the shepherd were, where the sheep were, and just stood there and watched the whole time. And two dogs working, and the shepherd, and he took the shepherd, uh, the uh, sheep all the way across. It was really fascinating. Now 4.3, they had to be strong, shepherds had to be strong, to brave and conduct, uh, uh, protect the weak lame, uh, lamb that they had to defeat, that they had to take care of. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. First Samuel 15, or 17, verse 34. But David said to Saul, your servant was tending his father's sheep. Let me just tell you right now, shepherd doesn't own the sheep. They're never his. They're somebody else's. Every pastor needs to know that, but every shepherd needs to know that. David knew that, took care of his father's sheep. When a lion or bear came and took a sheep from the flock, I went out after him, attacked it, and rescued it from his mouth. And when he rose up again, again me, I seized him by his mane and struck it and killed it. This is what he had to do as a shepherd. They also knew to guard them at night and then had to keep guard of them, keeping them counting, being counted to each one of the flock. For the good shepherd is ready to lay down his life. A good shepherd is ready to lay down his life for the sheep. He must be ready to save their filthy, these filthy, dirty, dumb 
animals all the time. These shepherds for, uh, foreshadow the person of Jesus Christ. So it is befitting, it is befitting that the first person to hear the story of Christmas was shepherds. Five, endure all changes of weather and in guard and then in open fields. That'll be come out of study. Six, he was humble and honest. Seven, they had a job of loneliness and do their job alone. Eight, the shepherd knows all the help that the sheep needs. Pasture, water, protection. He must know the well-being of the sheep. Many, many shepherds know how to sing. I'm glad it wouldn't make a requirement though. I really am. I got to be a pastor because they don't have to sing. But good shepherds can sing or at least make a very uh, precise type of noise that the sheep would be able to identify at their any command. Nine, these shepherds were under religious rules. Under religious rules. The scribes and Pharisees had banned the shepherds because the shepherds could not come to the temple <coughs> and worship. Yet, they kept the sheep who to God to use in the sacrifices in the temple, but they themselves could not allow were not allowed there. Ten, we know from the Mishnah that those particular shepherds, the ones that were right here tonight, these particular shepherds were guarded guarding sheep to be used as animal sacrifices, representing the Messiah. And as they took care of these sheep, one of these lambs would be chosen to be sacrificed as a picture of the taking away the sins of the world. These shepherds were watching the very shadow of the point that pointed to the coming of Christ. Eleven, these shepherds have absolutely nothing to offer have nothing to offer the Christ child. Yet, they are told, and we will see it later, they will bring into the mother of the child, not a gift, not a gift, but they will bring some doctrine from the word of God. They will bring the word of God to Joseph and Mary. And these, and this is the analogy of the pastor in the church age. His job is to teach the word of God. Now, Luke 2 verse 8. In the same region, there were some shepherds. Now, staying out in the fields, shepherds and their sheep were not to come into the city. They were not allowed to go into the city. Now, if you look at that word, region, for region, it says they are staying out in the field, in the fields. Uh, the, in the same region, there were some shepherds. Okay, see that word region? It's a perfect description of the shepherd's life. The word means, the Greek word means to live out of doors to live in open air. The shepherd's life was the tending, was the, uh, the tending of the sheep. Of, co of uh, course, this includes during the day, also a night and day. But that's what the Greek word means, the word in the region. It means outside. And keeping watch over their flock at night. Of course, this includes all day. To to watch was uh, uh, what was what has been committed to them, to their responsibility. 
Here is a, re, a re, really in, in, interesting thing. Let me give this to you. The shepherd will, will leave their sheep. Now listen, not pastors to give you this. The shepherd will leave their sheep that has been instructed to strip it to them after the angel, after the angels come and proclaim to them what was going to happen, the birth of Jesus. They will bray, they will leave their post, which they will have done, been doing faithfully guarding. And the reason they will leave in that is that there is no need for them to be guarding any longer. The sheep, the shepherd, are now replaced by the reality, the Lamb of God. Now, verse 8. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the field and keeping watch over their flock at night. Note the Greek word translated, staying out in the fields. Staying out in the fields. The description of the shepherd's life is meant to live outdoors. The second time has been enforced. To live out of doors. To be homeless. This is a description of a shepherd's life. Now, let's go to verse 9. Luke 2, verse 9. The following angels are important to the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. The angelic conflict is very important at the birth of Christ. Very important to getting born and uh, being told about these type of things. So they play a very important part. In it, uh, it is an angel, just one angel, giving this info, not the Lord, but sent by the Lord. Now, this is now suddenly. There, excuse me, there is no suddenly. It's translated suddenly, but there is no suddenly described here as the standing near. The glory and the glory of the Lord shone around them. Okay. I started to spend a great deal of time on the glory of the Lord, but let's just take a few things that are important to our study. One, glory here refers to the point that all emphasis, the source of blessing, is from God. Two, therefore, in the story of Christmas, we have the principle of grace. The glory of God, for three, the glory of God's essence is seen in Christmas. Psalm 21, if you want to turn, fine, it's just one short, short verse. Psalm 30, 21, 5. His glory is great through salvation. Splendor and majesty you, God, place upon him, Jesus Christ. Deuter uh, ne ne Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 5, Deuteronomy 5, 24. <laughs> you said, Behold, the Lord our God has shown us his glory. The Lord our God has shown us his glory and his greatness. And we have we heard, we have heard his voice from the midst of the fire. We have seen today the glory speaks with with men, and yet they do not die. For glory is used in the New Testament for Jesus Christ himself. Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, to whom God willed to make known, to make known what the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And five, God is glorified in giving this his unique and only Son set the pattern for every, every blessing 
you and I will receive. Ephesians, Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Now verse 9 continuing of Luke chapter 8. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood there before behold them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terribly frightened. They became frightened. They were greatly frightened because of the sheep. Once you understand that. Why were they frightened? It was because of the sheep. The sheep could be afraid. That things could happen to the sheep right now. It wasn't about them. It was all this that's going on. I've got to save them. The sheep are their responsibility. And if anything happens to the sheep, they would be in trouble. Continuing good news at Christmas. Luke 2, 10. But the A, but. But. So first of all, you go to verse 9. They were great, terribly, terribly frightened. Verse 10 now. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. Here is the greatness of the word of God. It starts with the greatness, fear not. Great news from the angel, fear not. But there are a multitude of believers who will be afraid of things coming, coming forth in this year. COVID. Fear not. Economic collapse. Fear not. Breakdown in war. Fear not. Just fear not. The Christmas message is a message to abolish fear. The shepherd cannot take in the Christmas courage while in fear. You and I cannot take in doctrine if you're afraid. Fear not. It is in the imperative. Here is the command of life. Luke 2.10 Do not be afraid. Fear not. For behold, now that means to look, to see the perspective of what is happening. Here is the command for every believer, believe the, the, in every circumstance, every circumstance of life. See the perspective of what is going on from God's point of view. Do not panic. Do not fear. Verse 10, do not fear, but see what God is doing. See and think, and think what from God's speaking. I am about to be giving you some good news. Here is the reason, fear not. I bring you good news of great joy. Do not fear. Yagalipso, this is the word for gospel. It's translated great uh, joy, or great, no, excuse me, good news. That's the gospel. The verb means to communicate the gospel. The gospel is always great joy. The gospel is always inner happiness. Christmas is time of great joy. How not to be unhappy at Christmas? Why? All of you can be happy at Christmas time regardless of loneliness, regardless of parties you're not invited to, whatever it is, regardless of the gifts you didn't get, it's happiness in your soul, relationship with the Lord. With whom be all, which, which will be with all men, all people. The Christmas gift is for all members of the human race. God the Father has given 
the entire human race the Christmas gift the human race salvation for everyone is the source of happiness for everyone which will be for all the people whoever people what, whichever anyone this is a grace word it is a great quality qualifies the extent of this effort to anyone who will receive and believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior. This phrase, which will be, is the assurance that salvation is offered to every member of the human race. For all the people, this in itself is a law, is a teaching of unlimited atonement. And in the Greek, there is a native of advantage for all the people have the communication of the gospel and it is to their advantage to believe for they will receive the perfect happiness of God. Christmas is good tidings that bring God's perfect happiness to every person who will believe. Verse 11, Christmas is the birth of the Savior. For today, the city of David, there were born for you, who is Christ the Lord. First person to hear this, shepherds. Not the priests, not the rabbis, these shepherds, first to hear this. Note that the way the angel describes the city of the, of the child, Christ's child, not Bethlehem, but the city of David. And these shepherds knew exactly where we where to go to look for the city for David. The shepherds knew exactly where to go to find the shepherd, the, where the Savior would be born. Let me show you what the Greek says. Because was born to you today a Savior who is Christ the Lord in a city of David. So this is not what you have in your, in your text, but just look at it. Because was born to you today a Savior who is Christ the Lord in a city of David. The Greek starts with the, the causative because. <clears throat> this is where the joy to all people starts. Because was born. There is from the heiress passive indicative and this is important for what it tells us. So let me t take some of your time here. Heiress tense. Heiress. This means to introduce the point in time when Christ was born. Passive. Passive is fun. Passive is where the subject receives the action. So, passive here in the grace where Jesus Christ receives being born from the plan of God because anything you receive, some, something from the plan of God is grace. And then the indicative mood. This is the historical reality of the birth of Jesus Christ. I, I want to emphasize this over and over. To you. For you. For you. This is for your advantage. For your advantage, Jesus Christ was born on the first Christmas morning for your advantage. Mm -hmm. Yes. When you're emphasizing that the shepherds were the first to hear, you're talking about the actual announcement that he was born because a lot of people knew he was coming, right? Like like Elizabeth and Zechariah. But the first person to hear the, re re the noise, yes, the, the, the proclaiming of it. This is where it happened. But people, a lot of people were expecting it. They were 
Yeah. I don't know about a lot, but there were there were a lot that we'll say a lot expecting it, but they knew nothing about when, when, where, things like that. Well, the wise now, all men, this, and all the of a sudden, men, there it is, given. The wise men expected. Yeah, they expected. It was looking for. Sometimes, the somewhere, somewhere they knew. Mm -hmm. They knew, but this. What you're referring to when you're saying the shepherds were the first, it was the actual announcement of, he's here. Yes. Okay. The actual announcement. Yes. But just expounding on what she said there, so those particular shepherds in that region were already expecting the Messiah, right? Yes. Well, you know, you were saying that they, the, the shepherds were not allowed in the temple no. And all that no. So how yeah. how were they educated to the degree to know? No, they weren't expected. He, Jew, Jews. So, so they were not expected. All, all were taught the Bible, the, the, the scriptures. Even even if they didn't go in to the temple, they 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 were taught the, their scriptures. And even through their job of what they're doing, they're raising these. Lamb, these sheep that are going for sacrifice to the temple, and they know what it's for. They, they've been living that, yes. and raising these, and understanding what sacrifice yeah. was for the. That's why they get up and leave them. Yeah. Which is really something to me yeah. that they will leave their sheep to go to the Christ. Yeah. yeah. Maybe in some ways they understood better than anybody else. Absolutely. Why the angel went Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yes. I would think it was just passed down. Five hundred years, the wise men. And then on, and the, you know, they just kept passing it down. He will come. So whether, you know, the Pharisees, they probably they heard it, they didn't believe it. These guys believed it. Yes, they believed it. Christ was born for my advantage, and he died for my advantage. Christ was born for your advantage. Christ died for your advantage. Christ rose. For your advantage this is what should cause you to be occupied with christ during christmas christmas is for my advantage christmas is for your advantage a savior who is christ the lord all right a savior okay not the savior the absence of the definite article emphasizes the quality the quality of the person of Jesus Christ. This is the greatest quality on earth. This is the God man. Savior from the slave market of sin, from the second death, and yes, from hell itself. Christmas is a member is a remind, reminder that there is a literal hell, and every person need to be saved from it. He, he is the Savior who delivered us from the justice of God to his perfect righteousness and to perfect happiness with him. There never was a time when Jesus Christ was not the Savior of all mankind. And there will never be a time when he will stop being the Savior. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The announcement of good news for all mankind today, all over the world, there is nothing but bad news going on around, around the world. Here's the good news. Bad news is everywhere, but, but from a study of our passage, Christ is born. That's good news. Now let's go to verse 12 answers the question as to how they were to identify the baby spoken on the name and, uh, by the angel. It will be the easiest baby to identify in history. These shepherds will have no problem for they will be given a sign. This will be a sign for you you will find a baby wrapped in clothes lying in a manger now if you don't know the wrapping and the manger 
This is not going to make any sense to you. But if you understand these, you'll understand this will be no problem for these shepherds. They know they're looking for a baby. They will be a sign for you. You will find, and when any in any looks for Jesus, will find him wrapped in clothes. Okay. They will not so quick look so quickly uh, with this wording. Don't go by it. The word, the Greek word, refers to death clothes. Death clothes. This was in a mo in a merge in a, a manger area, a place where there were animals. Animals die. And when you have your animals die, you got to wrap them up somewhere and get them out of there. That's what this wrap is. So that's what it was for. Every baby will be wrapped up, but not in death clothes. So it's not just be wrapping up in clothes. Would you Today, we'd see them. See a baby wrapped in clothes? Well, it, you know, depends on the color and the, how the expense and all that. Not this one. This is different. This is a death wrapping put around him. See that in a manger? It refers a stall, a feeding trough. That's where they were seeing man there, laying there. It will be easy to see Jesus lying in a feeding trough. They are brought by seeing this, being told by the angel. It was a feeding trough for this is for the feeding of all the members of the human race on Jesus Christ. He is the feeding to all. Now, Christmas is heavenly worship and praise. The angel who is speaking to the shepherds is not joined by heavenly choir, is now joined by heavenly choir of angels and this must have been something wonderful to hear. Verse 13, And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God. Okay. This, re, this is real music that is going to be heard now. We start off with suddenly. We have an adverb in the Greek. We did not have this in verse 9 where it's translated. It really isn't there, but it's here in this verse 13. It appears but five times in the New Testament. It is uh, used twice by Paul and suddenly in uh, coming to Jesus Christ. That's where most of the time it's used. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is well pleased. Okay, in heaven, in heaven. The birth brings glory in heaven, going on in heaven. It, glory, it, it resolves the angelic conflict in heaven. The glory of God completely destroys the, the, any claim to glory by Satan himself on earth. So we got glory, heaven, now we got on earth. On earth. The result is different and on earth than it is in heaven. In heaven, it is brought glory. On earth, it brings peace. On the heavens, glory. On earth, peace. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace among men with whom he is well pleased. Glory, the manifestation of the essence of God in his virgin birth. God, the glory belongs to God, not to man, to God. 
by virtue of his essence expressed highest, highest, most extol, ex exalted place in the third heaven is, is talked about here. And now we change the location from heaven to the earth. So let's just read this and then we'll close. Luke chapter 2, two verse 14. And on earth, the earth, location, the angelic conflict, peace. This does not refer to the world peace. This is nothing to do with the world peace, nothing to do with wars. This refers to reconciliation of the righteousness of God. Reconciliation is the first work of God from which man benefits eternally. God the Father planned it. God the Son executed it. And God the Holy Spirit reveals it. So there's your plan. God the Father planned the Christmas story. God the Son is executed in Christmas. The God the Holy Spirit reveals. Question. Which member of the Godhead there tore the wall of, of separation down? The wall of the Hebrew the, in Jerusalem. Who tore it down? Answer, second person, Jesus Christ. Question, which member of the Godhead revealed it to you? Answer, God the Holy Spirit. Question, which member of the Godhead loved you so much? that he made in this plan, he made his plan. Answer, his father. And on earth, peace among men with whom he is pleased. What Christmas story card says this, so many Christmas cards say this wrong. They talk about it this way. God, God, goodwill toward men. That's wrong. It's not peace among men, but peace in men, in their souls. Christmas gift is in your soul, in men with whom he is well pleased. Let's close with 1 John chapter 3. We look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 11. We are here to please God. That's why we're here. In men with whom he is well pleased, but we're here on earth to please him. Today, tomorrow, every day. That's what we're here for. To please him. 1 John 3, 3.22 And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and keep on doing the things that are pleasing to his sight. This is his commandment, that we believe in the name of the Son of Jesus Christ and love one another, just as he commanded us. This is what we are to please him in doing in our life. So I wish you all a very wonderful Christmas and a wonderful time. Next Sunday we will complete our study on this. Let's close in a word of prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we know Adam and Eve set the pattern for all those covered on. We know that Adam decided to sin. We know that Eve deceived, was deceived. She didn't just go out and sin. She was deceived. She thought she could be like God. She was deceived. Adam chose to sin. We know, Heavenly Father, that our Savior chose to sin, chose to bear the sins of the world,
take all of our sins, take it upon himself. We praise our Savior. We're so thankful for this Christmas. We're so pleased for him. It is our job, job every day to please, to honor, to tell others about Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that this Christmas, members in this church will have this type of happiness, this peace, this joy in their souls. I pray this in Christ's name and for Christ's glory.